I've been reading a lot of monologues. Uh, the thing is, when, when you're an actor or you do plays and stuff, you're going to have to read monologues. It's just part of most scripts. Most scripts like to have this one moment where it is a character talking to either another character or the audience, and they're trying to just get a point across. Now, the character may not know exactly what the point is. Most monologues will consist of a character who's trying to talk his way leading up to a point. And it just kind of happens naturally or flows. Maybe somebody already has a point, and they're trying to convince the other character of their own point. And, but then throughout that, they realize that maybe their point isn't the best way. And it's always this journey that everybody likes to throw into their script. Stuart's already back with his food. Hey, Stuart. Come. Come here. Come here. Stuart, do you know any monologues? No. You don't know any? Not really. Well, make one up. What? Because I'm talking about monologues, and I want you to do one. I don't watch enough TV. Oh. You, it's not about TV, Stuart. It's about plays. Just do one from your play. favorite play. Only I know of is the one we did. Well, do that. Do the monologue that you had from that. Okay. Even though it wasn't a monologue. No. Just make up a monologue. Oh. Just sit here. I want Just stand here and then tell a story. Just do a monologue. Do a monologue about a dog that you ran over. And it's up to you how you felt about it, but you just got to do a dialogue. You got to feel the feelings, okay? Can you do that, Stuart? I've hit four deer. You've hit four deer. Tell a story about the one that you had to shoot in the head. The one I had to shoot But tell head. it like you're telling it to somebody else, like <clears throat> to the camera, as if you're talking to somebody. Do a monologue about shooting a deer in the head. Come on, Stuart. Come on. Come on. <laughs> It'll be a good time. How do you want to... Just, just act, Stuart. Just act. You gotta act. Let me get my Mountain Dew. I don't... I don't act. Well, Stuart, I'll sit over here. Just tell me the story about how you shot a deer in the head. Tell you a story. <laughs> no, how I shot a deer in the head. That's a great start to the monologue. Here's the story of how I shot a deer in the head. Well, all right. Here it goes. I'd go to Griffin to help my brother out, who, of course, you know, likes alcohol a lot. He was, he was, he was in, he was at the hospital, so I went and picked him up. I had to take him to the hotel room, which at that time it was like 3 or 4 in the morning. By the time I actually got him to the hotel room, I had to find one first. So I had to drive around for like an hour to find the place. So I just dropped him off, spent 80 bucks on the hotel room for him to stay the night there, the day before Christmas. Dropped him off, not having a good day. Drove back home. <clears throat> I had to drive all the way back home, about an hour and a half to get back. And about 5.30 in the morning, literally two minutes from the house, I hit a deer going about 55 miles an hour on Fisher Road. <laughs> but I tried to swerve and to miss. Of course, when I did that, the deer just followed. Of course, it knocked my headlight out, damaged both my fender, my bumper, and radiator. So I pulled over, turned around, and then a cop pulled up behind me and asked if it was dead yet. So I said, ah, I don't know. Uh, I believe so. Then I saw it move, and I was like, oh, well, no, he's still alive. And he asked me if I had a gun. <laughs> so I said, yes, officer, I have a gun. I carry a 9 millimeter. Do you want to see my license? He's like, no, I believe you. And I said, well, you, you sure? I even handed it to him, and he didn't want to see it. So I walked there. He, he told me, he said, you're going to shoot this deer. <laughs> he's like, but I'm not here. Because apparently, I don't know, he said, you can't shoot, cops can't discharge fire, firearms without writing a report about it, which is kind of a lie. So when I see the left, then I shot the deer in the head twice. And then I went home, and I didn't sleep the rest of the night. And I was up for like a day and a half straight. And that's what I did. I shot a deer. A baby buck. I went home, and that was it. Uh, I had I had to put a bungee cord on my headlight to hold it in. And that one, that's how I did. That was my choice, my story there. And then you bowed to the audience. Because you did such a good job. <laughs> no, I didn't. You did just fine. That was the best story about shooting a deer in the head I've ever heard. It's also the only one I've heard, and I've heard it multiple times. That was the best rendition. Rendition well, the red-nosed reindeer that's now shot in the head four times. Or was it twice? I saw it twice. Murderer.
But after I shot it, it had spasms and it kept kicking. Even though I just shoot in the head, it eventually, like, three days later, it was nothing but skin and bones. Everything ate it. Everything? Everything.